Hello, and welcome back to the Security Metrics Podcast. My name is Jen Stone. I'm one of the principal security analysts here at Security Metrics. Super excited to be here in season five. Whoever saw this coming? And, and very excited about my guest today, Donna Grindle. If you haven't watched any of our back catalog and you like what you hear today, we've had Donna on several times. HIPAA, and if you're in the healthcare space, either as a provider or as a service provider, you're going to find today's topic very uh, interesting and applicable to you. And, and honestly, anything that we've done, it doesn't even matter if it was the first year that we did it. It's still applicable. Check it out. Donna? Welcome mm -hmm. back. Please tell people who haven't heard of you before who you are and what you do. <laughs> well, first, congratulations on five years. I mean, one of the things it, it to maintain these things, uh, it, it's tough. It's, yeah. it's a commitment that a lot of people don't. That's why there's millions of podcasts that have like maybe a handful or episodes or one season. That is like, hey, that's too hard. Truthfully, so, truthfully, the biggest overcommit of my career because when, <laughs> when the marketing team came to audit and said, hey, we want to do this podcast, but we kind of need somebody a little more technical who can actually talk to people fr from a technical standpoint. And everybody turned and kind of pointed at me. And I was like, sure. Cause, you because I thought we would only do a half dozen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. And, it. and it means I get to talk to really cool people that are related to privacy, security, um, uh, like yourself, of course, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm amazed how many times I'll see somebody like on LinkedIn or that I've heard it a talk somewhere and think, oh, I'd love to talk to them. And then I send them a message and then they say yes. <laughs> it's <laughs> like magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little scary sometimes, but, uh, but you know, have a, we had a, uh, our podcast, Help Me With HIPAA. Yep. Which Great I think podcast. If you haven't seen Help Me With HIPAA, Help Me With HIPAA. HIPAA. <laughs> uh, I, I've watched every episode, so or listen. I mean, I'm not watching yeah. it. Yeah. Well, thank you, and that says a lot because we're on eight and a half years. Yeah. So, you know, that's and it's weekly. Uh, I I don't know. We have a couple of uh, our sound editor does our Christmas blooper show. We, he has fun with it, <laughs> and we get a week off. But, um. That is, I believe, how we first met as you reached out to me either on social media or the podcast or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think I was like the second or third guest. You're like, if I'm doing this, yeah, Donna Grindle, please yeah, come Yeah, out. please come help me out. And, <laughs> and uh, it, it uh, yeah, I'm really grateful that you said yes and that, that we get to continue to um, oh, yes. uh, talk yeah, to each other. I loved it. Yeah. So I am the CEO of my company, Carden. Mm-hmm. I'm the Don <laughs> of Cardon. Pardon, pardon. K A R D O N. And, uh, you know, if you search for Donna Grendel or you search for not Harmon Cardon speakers, but <laughs> Cardon Group yeah. uh, is really the legal name, but we just go by Cardon because yeah. why I add more letters? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you have to type. So, CardenaceQ.com, you can learn about all our stuff, but we're geared to help people build and manage these programs yeah. for privacy and security. And we speak the geek, mm -hmm. we speak healthcare, we speak, you know, we understand the billing, we've worked with clinicians, we've been a vendor, we've been an IT company. Yeah. Now we just kind of sit there and gather everybody's opinion and say, well, here's what I think based on what all y'all think. Yeah. And, and people often ask me, you know, why I talk to you so often. They're like, aren't you guys com like competitors? We have a little overlap in what we do, but I, I do Maybe. not have the appetite for what you do um, primarily, <laughs> which is building the program. I'll evaluate yeah. your program and tell you what's missing. And I'll yeah. do a really good risk uh, analysis, but um, I, I don't want to help you with policies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, well, I hate doing that too, uh, but that's why we built our own special system where that people freak out. It's like, why am I not seeing any policies? Why am I just answering all these questions about how I want to do things? Because that's what you should be doing when you get a tip. Yep. Yep, exactly. T and templates can lead people astray because they'll fill it and they'll say, oh, I'll do a, a, a search and, co you know, copy my name in there. 
And then mm-hmm. the policy says that we we are going to do these things in these ways, well, the procedures in these ways, and then it, it has nothing to do with how they actually do things. And, right. And so when they when they get either um, you know an audit by you know someone like me, and then you say, "All right, your policies say you're going to do these things. Are you doing these things?" And they say, "No." <laughs> well, with me, it's more you know, here's your finding and go fix it. That kind of thing. But if it's the OCR that comes in and does an audit as a result of a breach, then you're in a world of hurt. And so getting yeah. starting with policies, getting things right, I think there's there's a lot of value in that. <laughs> well, and, and we make it where you make the business decisions that are supposed to go in the policy. That's what we're interested in getting out of you. We can make a policy that has all the cross-references and those kind of things, but we're just going to put it in formal writing what you already decide. Yeah, and that's really what what our documentation should be, uh, anyway. Yeah. So, um, I, and I'm I'm excited about the, another thing that you're part of, which is um, the public private partnership group. Um, yes. part of which is 405D. Right. So 405D, uh, which it has its own website, 405D.hhs.gov. Mm-hmm. And I'm dragging you into you it. You certainly now. are. <laughs> <laughs> We're both ambassadors uh, now for 405D. Uh, well, You've been yeah. and you have been one for a while. You even got uh oh oh you got recognized recently with a special letter and a challenge and, coin and I I know yeah. you didn't want me to tell about that, but I was excited yeah. to see that somebody that I thought was pretty cool got recognition for doing a lot of work in this area. Yeah, I did, and and yes, I don't really talk about it, yeah, but I did. You're get, welcome. I did, get a, <laughs> I did get a special recognition from uh, Greg Garcia, yeah. uh, who is the executive director of the Health Sector Coordinating Council Cybersecurity Working Group. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was pretty cool, and uh, they they did it when I wasn't at a meeting. Uh, so then everybody's congratulating me, and I'm clueless as to. <laughs> But that's not new. <laughs> no, like what? Why are you saying nice things? Okay. Yeah, but, I'm like, uh, what did I miss? Maybe we should back it up a little. A lot of people have never even heard of 405D. Yes. So, back in 2015, um, yeah, part of the original Cybersecurity Act that had all of these things that were cybersecurity things that were going to be done, and it was all federal government. There was nothing specific to sectors except for healthcare. Mm -hmm. And that was way back then when it was just starting to get bad. Yeah. You know, 2016 is when all of the first ransomware attacks on the hospitals were happening and making, I mean, there had been more, but it really ramped up in 2016. So that was some surprisingly good forethought. Uh, <laughs> we knew it was a problem. <laughs> and things are but, so much yeah. more difficult now for people in the healthcare industry. Absolutely. And that's what we're trying to do through HSCC is the Health Sector Coordinating Council, as I mentioned. They're the private part of the uh, partnership with HHS, which has the 405D task group is part of yeah, so they HHS employees work with us mm-hmm. on the 405D group, so we're actually working directly with them on 405D. Um, so everything is like co-branded. It's all of these things, which is very different than the other health sector groups. And there are health sector groups for all of these. HSCC has a wonderful breakdown privacy and security, incident response, enterprise risk management. There's different groups working on all of these uh, products to help advise and provide free guidance based on, uh, you know, actual people in the sector. Right. Helping guide uh, the direction of a lot of this training, guidance, uh, cybersecurity practices, a whole litany of things that we've released through HSCC, but then 405D is an element of that mm-hmm. that then does specific things working with HHS. 
right under the Cybersecurity Act 405D. So we're kind of like a 401k. <laughs> we don't know what it means, but everybody everybody uses about. the name, but we don't know what why yeah. why yeah. is that? It's actually another law. 401k <laughs> is a sector, a segment of a law. So, uh, but I love being part of that yeah. because we have uh, you know some groups they got the health systems and the vendors and the payers you know they're doing uh, a lot of the large enterprise work mm -hmm. and then the folks like me are doing the work for the small and medium businesses the small and medium practices you know we're even kind of venturing over into all right how do we help the rural hospitals and yeah. You know, so there's a lot of discussion and there's a couple of hundred people on the, the 405D task group and I'm the co-lead of the ambassador program. And our job is to provide education mm -hmm. about our services and all the things happening in cybersecurity, all the products and tools. We got training things and, uh, you know, newsletters, all kinds of things. So go sign up for our mailing at 405d.hhs.gov. Yeah, definitely. And do you know one of the things that I hear from a lot of people is that um, HIPAA is hard because there's not any guidance. So, <laughs> and I think, uh, I mean, st stick with me for, <laughs> for a minute. I think it's because they're not they're not reading anything. <laughs> I think it's some yeah. of them might even just read, um, read the law, you know, and go and, and read the, well, pull up the e, the ECFR yeah. and, and look up the, yeah. the, the law itself for, for HIPAA and, 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 um, and, and yeah, maybe the language in there is a little bit, it doesn't give you the specific direction on how to, um, but can you imagine how fast technology changes if they had put how to in the law and how slow law changes? And so, so for, for people who don't know where to start, I think 405D is an absolute game changer in terms of the, just the amount of um, resources that, that you can access there. Oh, yeah. We, so the Cornerstone publication is called Health Industry Cybersecurity Practices Protecting Patients. So it's known as Hiccup because nerds. Yeah. Uh, well, and you can remember that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't even get the rest of it. But HICP, and and so now we have Health Industry Cybersecurity uh, Hick Ticker. We have Hick Scrim. We have, I mean, it's all of these different things. Health Industry Cybersecurity. So it's kind of like our gig. Right. So and, everything uh, starts with HIC because it's healthcare yeah. industry cybersecurity. And then they, they yeah. tack on the, the scrim and, the, and all of those things based on kind of where the focus is for that specific guidance, right? Right. And so it gives a whole new meaning. I grew up in the North Georgia mountains on a farm. I was a HIC my yeah. whole life. <laughs> uh, so I felt very comfortable. HIC, it's a new thing for it. Um, but we have the 2023 version of the guidance that added some updates from the original 2018, 2019 version, 20, yeah, somewhere in there. Um, and in that guidance, there's a main guide that explains, and we're going to focus on five specific threats. Yeah. And Let's I don't just throw everything against the way. We're going to focus on uh -huh. these five. And what can we do to limit these five? Mm -hmm. And we explain the five and we explain like defense in depth. We explain zero trust because all those things needed to be added. Yeah. So, yes, it's not hip in any way, shape or form. It is actually one of the two specifically named frameworks. And we, it, it is framework, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, but two specifically named uh, guides yeah. or practices under the recognized security practice amendment to high tech, which is public law one sixteen three twenty one. Or yeah. Anyway, um, it was one of the two specifically named in the law. Yes, and I think that's really important for people to to understand because so high tech high and HIPAA are the 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 laws that a lot of people a lot of people heard of HIPAA. Some people have heard of high tech as well. They work in conjunction uh, as the laws that 
or intended to protect, you know, healthcare industry. And then we've got um, these recognized security practices, and there's only three of them, right? There. Well, yeah, there's there's NIST cybersecurity framework. Mm -hmm. Great. Which you know, if you're already down that path, make that be the one you're doing. Yeah. It's hard, but if it's extensive. Yeah. If you're a big uh -huh. organization, especially if you're like a big service provider or something, you're going to want to do uh, that NIST CSF. That's absolutely a good choice. But well, and we've we've kind of helped adapt it to some small businesses that they're tiny businesses, but they provide very valuable services to huge corporations, mm -hmm. and they've been required to do it. So that's a that's a little side job thing we do. Nice, um, <laughs> but. But, but NIST CSF have, for, for like small practices is super overwhelming. Well, yeah, and we've always cross-referenced everything that we did that we produce in our policies and procedures and all of those things. We've always cross-referenced it to the NIST cybersecurity framework as well as HIPAA before HICCUP was even out. Mm -hmm. We were doing that. Well, HICCUP cross-referenced to the NIST cybersecurity yeah. framework as well. So... Most things will cross-reference to the NIST cybersecurity framework. So if you have adopted some other framework that is a reasonable one and you've cross-referenced it to NIST cybersecurity framework effectively, mm -hmm. there you go. You're doing NIST cybersecurity framework. You're good to go. Yeah. Uh, but the other is Hiccup. And Hiccup is kind of like a starter version for frameworks, I yeah. guess. And uh, you have technical guides that take you through the 10 practices and associated sub practices that are recommended. And it's like, here's the things that you should consider. Mm -hmm. But you're still managing risk. Yeah. It's up to you to manage the risk. And, you know, I just had a conversation where it's like, well, can I just, I, ha I hired these people. Why are you telling me I have to have cybersecurity policies? <laughs> can I just say they're doing it? Because there's things they can't do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, why why don't their programs prevent uh, phishing or anybody clicking? What's the problem with that? I'm spending plenty of money. Why is it not smart enough to figure that out? Okay. That's where you start with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I got you. I'll take it on. But the good news is if you adopt recognized security practices, mm -hmm. you're using Hiccup. Great, because Hiccup also cross-references to the latest thing came out from HHS, mm -hmm. which is the alignment for the CISA cybersecurity performance goals that were published for the critical infrastructure sectors. Mm -hmm. Healthcare would be a very valuable critical infrastructure thing. Yeah. Um, we need it. Isn't it specifically like, named as, as critical yes, infrastructure? It. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's actually... Uh, healthcare, and then there's a separate one for emergency services. So mm. the ambulances and all. So there's a little piece of another one. Yeah. And uh, so we're definitely part of that. And then HHS said, okay, all of the sectors have to announce how they recommend you do the CPGs. So we just came, we just had released, um, I guess the end of January, the health and public health health sector, public health, HPH, <laughs> HHS. There are HPH. so many abbreviations. <laughs> I know. And then you have the HDOs. Let's just, let's just say it. if it yeah. starts with an H, it's probably something you want to pay attention to. <laughs> right. So, uh, it, but HHS released their intended cybersecurity performance goals mm -hmm. for healthcare. And those cross-reference to hiccup. Very specifically, it came out that way. So mm -hmm. you're already doing hiccup. You're good to go. We've been telling people to adopt hiccup for years uh, since 2019. Mm -hmm. And then 2021, it became part of the high tech amendment. So we've really been telling people to do it. So if you've been down that path, like, you know, many of us have started, you know, really encouraging that, then you're great. Because here's the other thing is that HHS's cybersecurity plan that they released towards the end of the year, back in December 2023, clearly stated that they anticipate releasing these CPGs and then utilizing the CPGs to inform the changes they intend to make to the security rule. Nice. 
so just to circle, you know, close that circle, where does 405D fit with all of the H's? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like I'm on the private side, which is through HSCC. Mm-hmm. And we have the 405D task group sitting in there. Mm-hmm. HHS has people under, I think they're still under the chief information security officer uh, role office, office of information security, maybe within HHS, they have a team that is assigned to work with the private partnership folks. And they then uh, kind of bring in the HHS approval and processes. So we have some things. If it has to be branded by HHS, there's a lot that has to happen because now you're making it come out of a government entity. Mm -hmm. So we have very specific things and they have a team that then manages the HHS part of the things that we release. So, so it's, it's nice that these kind of work in concert and they, they kind of mirror mm-hmm. each other so, so that when people are in private, private practice or in, at the hospitals, they're on the, in the private sector of, of health care, um, that they can be assured that they also are following you know, approved, recognized um, okay. cybersecurity practices that are going to, to help keep them um, their privacy and security and all the things that that need to happen. So um, I know that especially for people who are um, maybe new to their roles or maybe even not new to their roles, but they're in charge of compliance uh, or security as they're maybe the compliant or maybe they're the privacy or security officer or at their, at their company, there is a lot to know and it can be, it can be difficult for, figuring out how to get your arms around it. And I know a lot of people who just listen to all those H's and everything that you just rattled off like it was nothing are going, yeah. well, I, I should have taken notes or something. I don't yeah. know. I'm out. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Why did I, why am I doing this? <laughs> but um, I, I, and I, I was going to talk about this at the end, but I think this is a great time to talk about the, the boot camp because um, you were kind enough to have me out um, uh, to be a, a small part of that. But, um, sure. You put that on with uh, David Sims and and your teams, and in it's a, an intensive training program. Can you tell me a little about, bit about that? Yeah, we're doing uh, this year. We're doing it in Atlanta, April 9th through the twelfth. And and if you're interested in it, just remember to go to PriceSecBootCamp.com or the HippoBootCamp.com. Yeah. And you can learn about it. They both go to the same site. But we developed this several years ago, and we have continued to um, fine-tune it, add to it, expand it. And it came from one of our clients saying, you know, we had, like, we would take you through six weeks where we stepped you through everything mm-hmm. and, and, like, coached you and all of that. And they're like, I don't have time for that. I need it crammed in. And we're like, I don't think you're. Yeah. You yeah. Six weeks is an um, easier way to ingest it for sure. But yeah, this boot but camp. They wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> so we, that's the, where the boot camp came from. And then we, you know, did it with our podcast is like, it's part of the podcast. David is, has HIPAA for MSPs, which we could talk about in a minute. Yeah. And then we have Cardin. And so it's the three entities all working, uh, it's the same people. We just have the three entities that we focus on independently. But it started as two days. Then it became three days. Mm -hmm. Now it's three and a half days. And I just did the agenda. I had to get (laughs) narrowed. It's going to be four. When we add in Uh really all the stuff with the CPGs and all of that kind of stuff, it's going to be four days. And, and so then it's like, well, then if you're going to do that, then make it five days and add in some gaps because you don't get any time. This is boot camp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no, there is no downtime. It's not just, oh, I'm going to wander yeah. in and listen to a talk. No, it's, nah. it, you're taking notes, you're inter- being interactive, you're going through workshops and exercises. And, and the cool thing about it is it, it you bring in people um, who are subject matter experts and even um, uh, people from OCR. 
Yes. Wh- which is when we, do you have a chance to ask them questions? I know. We, we bring in an investigator from OCR. We started doing this years ago. And, it, you know, we, we do it towards the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, we open with, here's why you need to prove this stuff. And we have it broken out. You've got to prove it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we also have Risky Business uh-huh. themed day. And there's also Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong. We'll go. So mm-hmm. we have it all broken out that way. And we bring them in to help people see, look, this is the kind of person. Now, Allison, who works with us, uh, has done this with us for years, Yeah, works in the Atlanta office, and, you know, she's just great. Yeah. And she's so kind, And but the number of times where she's, like, totally uncomfortable with what I'm telling her... <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, but that would be willful neglect. Maybe. It's a hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> Let me run an idea. Pat. This is just a thought experiment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but it's, it gives everybody an opportunity to understand because everybody worries I'm going to end up in this audit or I'm mm-hmm. going to be in this. And to understand, here's what we look for. Yeah. This is what we want. Yeah. It helps demystify so, it a little yeah. bit and, and add some concrete ideas around why why you want to be prepared why you want to prove it ahead of time so that you'll be prepared if you ever have to prove it to someone else well and that's the key to recognize security practices even you have to prove you've been doing this mm-hmm. for 12 months yes not like we planned on doing it and then when something happened we jumped <laughs> on it but we've been working on this and and yeah. and implementing and monitoring all of these things for 12 months prior mm-hmm. to an event. That's where you get the advantage. Yeah. And it's it's in our boot camp. It's designed to right from the beginning we say we're here so that you truly understand that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so the HIPAA bootcamp dot com mm-hmm. and Prisec bootcamp cat <clears throat> Prisec bootcamp dot com. And I'll be there if you want to meet me. And if you're yeah. in healthcare, you should probably sign up. Yeah, <laughs> me, me too. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah! I mean, you kind of have to. Yeah, I'm kind of like your the baby. One. But yeah. so one uh, man, this could have been three whole uh, uh, podcast episodes. But so the last thing that I wanted to talk about is something I'm actually really excited about, which is um, you mentioned briefly uh, the HIPAA for MSPs. You yes. guys put together an an actual certification. I want to tell tell us all about that. So HIPAA for MSPs is is David's. Uh, we. we he started it years ago, and then we've revamped it and relaunched it. It's primarily about providing resources and education to managed service providers in the healthcare sector. And it is, we're not about HIPAA made easy. We're about, here are the tools. Here's the things your clients are asking you for. And if they're not asking you, this is what they should be asking you, mm-hmm. but they don't know that. Or they're asking you something else, but this is what they really mean. Yeah that kind of stuff and it's also so that we can have those technical discussions and we can talk about why you need to do reports and what ways you should go about these kind of things and then david even works with some marketing folks that puts together a monthly marketing kit for msps in healthcare that takes one of our uh podcast episodes does blog articles does social media complete kit so that's another thing nice and several other pieces in there but the key piece is where we come in and if you're a member of hipaa for msps it automatically makes you a member of the Cardin club all-stars so that you could actually get the same information that your clients are getting and we are starting to see some value in that mm-hmm. but we built a training course and we had always had one. We just kind of continued to expand it. We built a training course and then handed it over to the American Institute for Healthcare Compliance. Great. And they took it and they built a certification program mm-hmm. 
based on the training that we built that says, and, and it's 17 hour video course. We're not talking 30 minutes, go get certified. Yeah. And you get two hours to take the test and it's monitored and, you know, proctored rather and all of that kind of stuff. It is a real certification from a certifying third party. Mm -hmm. And we make a point, it is called certified in HIPAA for MSPs. Yeah. We're just saying you've been trained in HIPAA specifically for what MSPs need. Yeah. And our training does everything from here's the real things you need to understand about how broad HIPAA really is mm-hmm. and how you mm-hmm. have a narrow focus and how you need to be clear about drawing the lines about what you actually do in your services. Yeah. And versus what they think they're getting, as well as what do you need to do for your own compliance. Right. And what do your clients need you to provide to them that they don't know they don't know? Yeah. And that's why I'm super excited about this because a lot of times when I go in to, to you know, conduct an assessment and for an, an organization and say, hey, how close do you think you are or what are your risks, something like that, um, depending on, on how they want us to look at it, a lot of times they'll say, oh, this third-party company that we have takes care of that for us. And I'll say, mm-hmm. how do you know? And and they're making a lot of times they're just making assumptions that that because they're a managed service provider that they just take care of all the things that they need managed, and mm-hmm. and and I'll say well do you do you have a list of what they're doing for you do you have do they send you reporting is there any how do you help me understand why they're great for you <laughs> and, and and it's pretty rare actually for um for an MSP to be ticking all the boxes and doing all of the, the things they need to do for a healthcare organization. Mm-hmm. So so this, I, I love this for a couple of reasons. It gives guidance to the MSPs that want to be part of the healthcare world. And it gives um, a way for someone looking for an MSP that needs them in the healthcare space to, to go and look for someone that has this training, that has this certification, so they can have right. a kind of a common language for what they're looking for. So this is this is exciting. I'm, I'm really, really um, stoked that you guys did this. No, and, and I mean, really, uh, the big thing for us is to make sure that there was something because there was nothing there out was there. There was nothing, yeah. And, um, you know, and there's plenty of people that are like, you're HIPAA verified or you're uh, we feel certain that we're HIPAA compliant yeah. and we just don't use that word, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's at, you know, HIPAA compliance is a moment in time yeah. decision. Yep. It is. What's important is that you can prove you have an ongoing program that is constantly evolving and monitoring itself. Yes. Yep. And, uh, so that's a big part of what we do in there is, I mean, we even in in HIPAA for MSPs, there's a forum and we have discussions that are just the technical ones, or you can participate in the rest of the group. And we just, like I said, we just relaunched it and did that. It was a lot harder than we thought to do that certification course. It was a lot yeah. harder than we thought it was. Yeah. Well, so I mean, it if, if, if it were easy, there would be several out there, but... Uh... Um, yeah. yeah, this is the one and only, and uh, um, yes. I think it'll be of a lot of value to a lot of different groups in, in the healthcare space. And if you're in Florida and you're an MSP in Florida, reach out to us because we have, there's a group in Florida that had a special grant to make sure there were more qualified uh, IT resources available in rural parts of Florida oh, and, wow. and other parts. So, they're part of a special grant, and we are one. They're hey, this this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. He says, "How do you do?" It? <laughs> <laughs> Love it when you sing to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we gotta have something, right? Absolutely. Um, but so we got the certified HIPAA, uh, certified for HIPAA MSPs, certified in HIPAA for MSPs. Uh, managed by the uh, American Institute for Healthcare Compliance. They have some other certifications. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're eager for us to expand that because they know there's no one that really has it. 
Yeah. So we're just now to the point, you know, this is not our full time job. No. <laughs> either one of us. So we're just yeah, well, now at the point where we're able to full time jobs. Don't <laughs> no kid yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the podcast. We got MSPs. We got all the garden services. Plus, I volunteer for HSCC mm -hmm. and 405D. And um, so you're you, you are know. just steeped in the whole healthcare, um, cybersecurity, privacy, th that um, knowledge. And I just uh, really appreciate you sharing it with people that are listening to my podcast. Um, we've covered a lot of ground today in a very short time. <laughs> Is there anything yes. um, we wanted to mention that I that we didn't talk about already? Well, see, I could take us down all these rabbit holes and yeah, we both could. know it because we've done it. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think the big thing is that people need to realize and, and still it, it's become harder for people who, if you're behind now, yeah, if you're behind now, you have no idea a year from now, how far behind you're going to be. Yep. So you have to not only catch up, but then you've got to hit the ground running to stay caught up. Yeah. And and it's not everybody's like oh they're you know it's the government this it's go we're literally we see the stats we know the numbers mm -hmm. people have died yes because of cyber attack yes they have there are issues with care that mm -hmm. gets delayed yep because of cyber attacks yep we have people whose lives get ruined because their privacy is violated. Mm -hmm. Their privacy rights are violated and things are told about them that they didn't want to share. Yeah. Yep. You know, so we have so many. That's what this is about. It's protecting the patients, mm -hmm. their rights, their privacy, so they don't stop telling us things. Yeah. Because we kind of need that to provide proper care. Absolutely. You know, there's a rash somewhere you don't want anybody else to know about. I can't tell my doctor either. Because <laughs> you're worried that it'll be shared. Broadcast or, around yeah, town. Exactly. Or on social media. Uh, yes, dang, social media. Um, uh, and, and I think that is, I really like how you bridge that understanding. It's not you can either provide healthcare services or you can take care of cybersecurity. That's, there's, there's not a gap between those two things. Right. And there's a lot of discussions about we don't need a privacy rule and a security rule in HIPAA anymore. We need privacy and security intertwined mm -hmm. in everything we do. Yeah. Yep. And until we're doing that, you're risking your business, mm -hmm. literally risking your business and the lives of all of the patients that are served. If you're a vendor, oh, well, I don't have to worry about that. Guess what? You do. Mm hmm. And that was one of the most valuable lessons I ever learned from a ambulance driver in the 90s. And we'll, we can end on this because it was a very valuable lesson. And clearly, I've never forgotten it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I used to do billing work. That was my big thing. I wrote electronic claim software when that was cutting edge uh -huh. with a big, big old school modem. And you wrote the axe and wax. But I am old. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, we were getting all the new GPS stuff with, you know, being able to have a laptop with the GPS and so they could actually yeah. find without people giving you directions. Yeah. They could find where it is. Plus, they were able to look up on the network. They could tie into the network and get access to see if drugs would interact. Mm-hmm. Which allowed them to save lives. Yeah. And they were excited about it. Now, this is cutting edge tech back then now. Mm -hmm. And so they, anytime they got new tech at the ambulances and I was there, I wanted to see it because, well, you yeah. would have too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's the whole nerd in us. <laughs> <laughs> and he's showing me the drug interaction things and the GPS. And I said, you know what? I'm really glad I do billing uh, because that I could kill people if I make a mistake with that. And he never skipped a beat. He said, if you don't do your job, I can't buy this. So it wouldn't even matter what they were doing. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't give me the opportunity to save those lives. So without your work, I don't even have the opportunity to use these things. 
And it was that bleak, bleak moment. Yeah. Yeah. We all matter in healthcare. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what your job is, somewhere it could save someone's life. Mm-hmm. It could help cure someone. You just don't you know. You don't know. You don't know. It's all intertwined. Well, this has been, uh, as always, an absolute um, delight speaking with you. And uh, <laughs> I look forward to the boot camp. And, and, and oh, by the way, that's the coolest shirt. <laughs> For people who are just listening, your ports were open, so I let myself in. That is a security metrics shirt that you're so cute for wearing that. <laughs> you know, trying to hook you up, boo. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. This has been a, a, a real fun conversation. Again, go back and look at the old catalog of everything that, that Donna and I have talked about in the past and uh, hope to see you again soon. You bet. Thanks for watching. To watch more episodes of Security Metrics Podcast, click on the box on the left. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. See you on the slopes.